Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. A very good day everyone. This is Preeta Wilma Dawson, Assistant Professor, College of Physiotherapy, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology, deemed to be a university. In today's lecture video, we will be learning about internal ear. We have covered previous videos regarding the external ear and the middle ear. Internal ear, it is also known as labyrinth. It is a membranous structure which is enclosed by a bony labyrinth in the petrous part of the temporal bone. We know that temporal bone consists of four distinct osseous segments like tympanic segment, mastoid segment, petrous segment and squamous segment. And this bony labyrinth is present in the petrous part of the temporal bone. So, this labyrinth consists of two sense organs. The sense organ for hearing is known as cochlea and the sense organ for equilibrium is known as vestibular apparatus. In this video, we will be learning about cochlea. For vestibular apparatus, we have a separate video. You can see here, the middle ear is present. The tympanic membrane is connected to the auditory ossicles. This auditory ossicle is a connecting structure which connects the middle ear to the internal ear. So, we have the stapes bone which is getting attached to the oval window which is the part of internal ear. We will start with cochlea. Cochlea is a coiled structure. It is very similar to the shape of snail's shell. In Greek, the word cochlea means snail's shell. Cochlea consists of two structures. The central conical axis which is formed by a spongy bone. It is called as modulus. And next we have the bony canal. This bony canal or bony tube will be winding around the modulus. The bony canal winds the modulus for about two and a half tons. Starting from the base of the cochlea and ends at the apex that is the top of the cochlea. The end of the bony canal that is the bony tube is called as cupula and the base of the modulus that is the central conical axis forms the bottom for internal acoustic meatus through which the cochlear nerve fibers will be entering into the modulus. Let us consider this structure as the central conical axis which is called as modulus. We have a bony canal which winds the central conical axis modulus which takes two and a half turns around the modulus. So this structure is called as bony canal. So this is the cross section of the cochlea. We have the modulus here surrounded by the bony canal. This bony canal takes two and a half turns winding around them. The turn at the base is called as basal turn. The turn in the middle level is called as middle turn and the turn at the top is called as apical turn. Now we will discuss about the membranes of cochlea. Cochlea contains two membranes. The first one is called the basilar membrane. The other one is known as vestibular membrane. This vestibular membrane is also known as reasoner's membrane. The basilar membrane is a connective tissue membrane which lines the outer wall of the canal. This basilar membrane is also known as membranous spiral lamina. Along the basilar membrane, there are about 20,000 to 30,000 tiny fibers. These fibers are called as basilar fibers. Each basilar fibers are of different size and shape. The fibers near the oval window are short and stiff. While the fibers approaching the helicotrima, the basilar fiber becomes gradually longer and soft. Here you can see the structure helicotrima. Helicotrima is the junction of scalar vestibular and the scalar tympanic. Next we will start with vestibular membrane. This vestibular membrane is also known as raisinous membrane and it is a thin membrane. This membrane is obliquely placed between the superior part of the spiral ligament and the upper part of the osseous spiral lamina. These two membranes divide the cochlea into three distinct compartments. The three compartments are scalar vestibuli, scalar media and scalar tympani. So this image represents the three compartments of cochlea. The scalar vestibuli and scalar tympani contains perilymph. This perilymph contains 
low potassium and high level of sodium. Whereas we have the scalar media. This scalar media contains endolymph in which there is a high level of potassium and low level of sodium. So the scalar vestibuli is also known as vestibular duct. The scalar tympani is also known as tympanic duct. The scalar media is also known as cochlear duct. The vestibular membrane which is also known as raisinous membrane and the other one basilar membrane. These two membranes divide the cochlea into three compartments and here we also have the organ of corti present here. Here we have the picture representation about the bony canal of cochlea. The bony canal of cochlea is composed of three compartments. The first one represents the scalar vestibuli and the next one represents the scalar media and the third one represents the scalar tympani. These three together forms the bony canal of the cochlea. Next, we'll start to discuss about the organ of corti. Organ of corti is a receptor organ for hearing. It is a neuroepithelial structure in the cochlea. What is a neuroepithelial structure? The tissue which is composed of sensory cells is called as neuroepithelial structure. The organ of corti lies on the lip of the osseous spiral lamina and the basilar membrane. This organ of corti is extending throughout the scalar media except for a shorter portion on either ends of the scalar media. And we have a tectoral membrane. The roof of the organ of corti is the tectoral membrane and in the organ of corti we have n number of cells, mainly two hair cells that is the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells. These two hair cells are the receptor cells which carries information to the brain via the cochlear fibers. And also this organ of corti is composed of n number of cells and one more important structure is called as the tunnel of corti. This tunnel of corti is also known as the rod of corti. So we have a video representation about the internal ear. The internal ear is composed of the vestibular apparatus and the cochlea. So first we'll discuss about the cochlea. So the internal ear is connected to the middle ear by the means of the auditory ossicle called stapes. This stapes is attached to the oval window. The vibration of the tympanic membrane as a result of sound entering the ear, this vibration is then transferred to the auditory ossicles and the auditory ossicle stapes vibrates the internal ear. And due to the flexibility of the round window, the vibration of the stapes will be getting into the cochlea structure that is the spiral structure of the internal here. The vibration from the stapes will be going to the cochlea and the returning of the vibration will be coming back and reaching the round window. In the cochlea we have fluid contents. So we have perilymph and the endolymph and also along with that we have three compartments in the cochlea. Fluid will be moving into the compartments of the cochlea from the stapes. So this fluid will be reaching the apex of the cochlea via the scalar vestibuli and it will be returning back via the structure called as scalar tympani. In between these two structures we have a duct called cochlear duct. This duct contains endolymph. Here we have the cross section of the cochlea. We have three compartments the scalar vestibuli, the scalar media and the scalar tympani. As a result of vibration the fluid in the scalar vestibula is getting vibrated and this vibration is then transferred to the structure called scalar media and then from there it goes to the scalar vestibule. In the scalar media we have the important receptor organ for hearing that is the organ of corti. This organ of corti is also being stimulated by the means of receptor hair cells that is the inner cells and the outer cells. These cells are getting stimulated and the sensory input is going to the brain via the cochlear nerve fibers. Yes, we'll have a quick recap about today's session. So we learned about internal here. Internal here is also known as a labyrinth. It composed of two structures. The first one is the cochlea and the next one is the vestibular apparatus. This video mainly focused on the cochlear component. Cochlea is made up of two structures. Modulus, this modulus is the central conical axis and the other one is the bony canal. So this bony canal will be winding around the modulus for two and a half turns. Next comes the membranes of cochlea. We have two membranes in the cochlea. The first one is the vestibular membrane which is also known as raisinous membrane and the other one is the basilar membrane. So these two membranes divide the cochlea into three segments namely 
scalar vestibuli, scalar media and scalar tympani. We had an overview about organ of cortex. And yes, we have come to the end of today's session. Thank you.